Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. So today I'm reviewing Future State Suicide Squad number one. So to start off, the cover is eh, not very good. <laughs> but let's just go ahead and get into this. So we start with Mongal, Brainiac, and Sinestro and they're on the run from the Justice Squad. So we have a narrator here. And we don't know who this is, but this person is talking about the Suicide Squad and tells us who these people really are. They aren't the Justice League, we know. Batman here is really Talon. Wonder Woman is really Hypnotic Woman, a character I'm not familiar with. Aquaman is really the Fisherman. Martian Manhunter is really Clayface. The Flash is a former Teen Titan called Bolt. And Superman here is actually... Superboy, or Connor Kent, the Connor Kent version. They're after an item that Sinestro and the others have stolen. So they get into a fight, and the Flash <laughs> severs Sinestro's hand, like cuts his hand off, rendering him powerless. And Brainiac is getting away with the item that they stole. And Batman here is torturing Sinestro, and he's told to get after Brainiac by a, a voice coming over a comm line. We don't know who it is, but he ignores the voice and keeps tormenting Sinestro, and then his head explodes. And, of course, in the Suicide Squad, you know, they implant a bomb in your head, which they'll detonate if you don't obey orders. So, obviously, this kind of suggests that this Justice Squad is really a form of the Suicide Squad. Now, after the fight, they retrieve the item, and they leave. And then we see these other characters in the shadows watching them. We don't know who they are, but they're after something, and they want the Justice Squad to lead them to it. Now, at the Pentagon, so this is a government-run team. This is a government operation. The Justice Squad is meeting, and then Amanda Waller shows up, and she takes several members of the team down with some kind of electrical shocks, and we learn that Waller is working on something called Project Home Base, and she has, uh, the, and the item that they took is somehow important to this Project Home Base. We don't know exactly what it is, but she shows this hologram, and it looks like the Hall of Justice, so... I don't know. I'm not sure what to take from that. Then she has a kind of pep talk with Superman where she gives him advice on how to run a team and about encouraging him, encouraging him to be more of a leader and that sort of thing. And then she shows him the crime syndicate who are all in these stasis tubes and says, you know, if your team doesn't get the job done or if they don't follow orders or if they become a problem then I'll just get rid of all of you and I'll bring the suicide or bring the crime syndicate back. Oh, and they have a they have a black lantern ring also apparently. And then so the the Justice Squad heads out on a new mission. And then again we've got these figures who are watching from the woods nearby, I guess. And then we see that one of them is Black Manta and he gets sick and like collapses. And then this other figure says, we all knew the risks of leaving our Earth. But if we want to save the world, we had to come to Earth 3, and we have to find and bring back Amanda Waller. So, they're on Earth 3, the crime syndicate's Earth. And apparently, I, I don't know, so is this Amanda Waller from the mainstream Earth, who has somehow come to Earth 3, or is this the Amanda Waller of Earth 3? Because they say find and bring back Amanda Waller, which seems to suggest that she's from their Earth and they're trying to bring her back to the mainstream Earth. I don't know. It's not really that clear. But anyway, we see that it is the Suicide Squad. And this version is led by Peacekeeper, obviously because he's in that movie that's going to be coming out by James Gunn. And then the other members we see here, this looks to be Cheetah. Evil Star. What is Evil Star doing here? Evil Star is like a cosmic level villain. He really shouldn't even be on this team. Mirror Master, 
I think this is a parademon here, and I don't know who this guy is. This story is really kind of lackluster. Written by Robbie Thompson with art by Javier Fernandez. Now, once you realize the story is taking place on Earth-3, it's kind of confusing. If they're on Earth-3, where everything is the opposite, then why would you call your team the Justice Squad? Shouldn't it be the Injustice Squad? Also, while some of the members seem appropriately evil, as they should be, some don't, the Connor Kent of this Earth seems very much like the main Earth counterpart. Shouldn't he be more evil? And some of the villains, like Clayface, they seem like they... You know, the the characters who are villains on the main Earth, they tend to be heroes on this Earth. So Clayface seems like he should be more of a good guy than he is. I, I don't know. Like I say, it's it's kind of confusing. Now, again, the story revolves around some item that was stolen and retrieved by the Justice Squad, but we have no idea what it is. Also, out of a 22-page story, about six pages are action, and the rest of it is just talking that isn't really depicted well. And the, it isn't drawn in any way that tells the story clearly, like, like here, for instance. So you've got this page, and the Justice Squad confronts these characters, so then they rush into battle. Well, normally it would be you go here, 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 then up here. But that's not how it works. It's here, here, this, this, then down here. And it was kind of confusing. I had to read this page like two or three times to kind of figure out, oh, okay, so the story goes to this way instead of coming down. So that was a little puzzling. And there's a couple of other instances where I think the the layouts and the story by Fernandez, it's it's not great. Now, I do think that uh, this Javier Fernandez, he has some raw talent, but he's not ready for prime time yet, in my opinion. The proportions on his figures are okay, but he really needs to work on making his figures more dynamic, and he needs to work on the expressions also. And just telling the story from panel to panel. At the very least, they should have had him work with an inker, because I believe he's inking his own pencils here. There's no inker mentioned. It's just him. And they really should have had someone come in and ink over his pencils, pencils over his pencils to uh, refine his work because it's very rough and again we get you know later in the story we get basically tv drama storytelling like here here and here and it's just not interesting it's just not visually interesting so overall this story, very mediocre. Now then we get a backup story that is supposed to be Black Adam. This is supposed to be like future state Black Adam. But the story really focuses more on the Justice Legion A. So if you don't know who that is, if you don't know who that is, back in the 90s, Grant Morrison did a storyline in Justice League called Justice League One Million. And in this story, a version of the Justice League from the far future, from the 853rd century comes back in time to help the Justice League of the modern day of the present fight one of Superman's enemies. And it had these future versions of the founding members, including Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, Green, was there a Green Lantern? No, there wasn't a Green Lantern, but there was an Aquaman, there were some others. So this story is by Jeremy Adams with art by Fernando Pissarin. So in the 853rd century, uh, we've got Mogo, the sentient planet, who is a, a Green Lantern. And it is Mogo is killed or destroyed by something. The JLA learns about it. And then we see Superman Prime. Now, Superman Prime is one of the... He is the... Superman we know. He's the Superman of the present day, but he is basically he's immortal and so he's still alive in this distant future time and he's far more powerful in this future time than he is in the present. All these thousands or thousands of years or hundreds of years of soaking up solar energy has made him immensely powerful. 
Uh, he actually lives inside the sun. That's where his Fortress of Solitude is. Long story. And uh, apparently he has a Green Lantern ring, which I don't remember that from the JLA 1 million storyline. But anyway, he's I guess, is aware of this threat. And so he goes out to face it. And it turns out that this group of villains calling themselves the Unkindness, which, <laughs> okay, I guess. And this version, this team is composed of the Seven Deadly Sins from the Shazam stories, and then some of the Lords of Chaos, who I, I won't get into detail who they are. I mean, it's not that important to the story. But anyway, they attack Superman Prime, and they kill him. They kill him in like one page. And again, this is Superman. This is the Superman we know, and he gets killed off in one page, despite the fact that he's supposed to be this immensely powerful character. Obviously, it's supposed to set these villains up as very dangerous and very lethal, and but they, uh, I don't know, I didn't like how this was done at all. So then we've got the Superman of this era, who is one of the descendants of the original Superman. And they've seen that he was killed, and so, uh, and this is the uh, future versions of Batman, Superman, Flash, and Wonder Woman. And this, the death of Superman is being projected out through the, the galaxy. And then the Aquaman of this era, he launches a war fleet to go out and defeat these villains. And it gets destroyed as well. And the Justice League, who for some reason are just sitting around and watching and not doing anything. <laughs> you think they would be taking some actions, but they, they're not. And Superman says, you know, what can we do now? How can we defeat these, uh, defeat these villains? And so they go to Kondok, which is Black Adam's country, uh, to enlist his help. Now, how, <laughs> how Black Adam's going to help? Because, again, even in the present, the present-day Superman is really more powerful than Black Adam is, or at least... You know, you could say maybe they're roughly equal, but Superman's probably actually a little more powerful. And then you've got this future version who is way more powerful, and yet the unkindness is able to defeat him fairly easily. So I don't really see how Black Adam's going to help here. But anyway, they appeal to him to help. Now, Black Adam and Wonder Woman have had a, a thing going on. And then the unkindness arrives, and... The League is fighting them, and then the League, again, is kind of like, how are you going to defeat There's this villain? There's no way. And Black Adam's kind of like, we can't defeat them. You know, you're coming here for my help was kind of a waste of time. There's no way to beat them. And then Wonder Woman mentions that she's pregnant with Black Adam's child. So Black Adam says, okay, well, I'll fight to the death to protect my child. So he transforms and becomes Black Adam again for the first time in centuries. And they retreat to this one uh, room in his in his headquarters. And the other members, aside from Wonder Woman, the other members of the Justice Legion have been taken control and turned evil by the unkindness. Then they break into the room to finish them off. And then this character called the Gold Beetle shows up and says, Believe it or not, I know how to save the universe. So... One thing I noticed with this issue is, I won't call them plot holes exactly, but both of these stories show some continuity gaps. Now, in the Suicide Squad story, the writer just doesn't seem to really get the whole Earth-3 concept. Some of the characters are supposed to be evil, but they're not. And why would a team on that world call themselves the Justice Squad? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Then in the second story, the writer seems to not fully understand the future Justice League and the Superman of that time. And real and this whole future state event seems to have some problems with consistency between the various series. For example, in my review of Next Batman number two, I noticed that a character is thrown in prison and encounters Black Lightning. And he's he's Jefferson Pierce. He's just his normal self. But in the first issue of next Batman, there's a backup story where the Outsiders, and in that, Black Lightning is shown to be working with the Outsiders, and he's been transformed into some kind of electrical being. He's all electricity. He's not a, a physical being anymore. 
Yet in the second, yet in the second issue, he shows up looking normal, and no mention of May, and no mention is made of why he's there or why he's a human being again. Obviously, a continuity error. So, you know what comics could really use is somebody whose job it is to catch these mistakes and make sure they don't make it to print. You know, someone who could proofread the issue and catch errors. Someone who could, uh, I mean, I don't know, edit the book, I guess. You know, if only DC had people like that. You know, maybe they'll hire some someday. <laughs> anyway, the Suicide Squad story was pretty boring. And Fernandez's art, the guy's just not ready yet. Again, maybe if he had an inker to go over his stuff, this would have worked. And as for the Black Adam story, again, the story overall kind of boring. But this guy, Pissarin, Fernando Pissarin, this guy's work is good. Look at this. This tore off. Ugh. Okay, whatever. Anyway, but this guy, Pissarin, this guy is good. Um, he, his proportions on his figures, not great. And he still has some work to do to make his figures more dynamic, I think. But boy, the guy has got talent. And in another year or two, this guy's going to be really good. He's definitely a name to watch. So overall, thumbs down on this one. Skip it. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments. And if you found this review informative, please hit the like button before you leave. Also, please sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.